pounds of ganache. I've got a white chocolate ganache that I'm about to start and I've got a whipped dark chocolate ganache that's going to be the filling for this cake. Um, it's a cake for a little girl. Uh, she likes pink so I am going to make a light pink coloured ganache for the outside because I find that most kids like ganache a lot more than they like fondant. Um, just to ensure the colour goes a bit more true. I've got about a teaspoon or so of powdered white colour and I've added a little bit of cream to it. I've got four blocks of uh, Cadbury Dream <laughs> all crunched up and I'm just going to add about 200 grams or 200 ml of cream to those four blocks. So it's a ratio of one to four because it's going to be a warm day tomorrow and the cake will be outside for a little bit. And most people don't realize that, hey, food is not really supposed to go outside for long periods of time, but you do what you can. Um, so I'm just going to add that white. And this is how I make most of my ganache. So that'll do. Not with the white, but yeah. Um, just cream straight on top of chocolate and then straight into the microwave. I will be back and so just wash my hands. Now that'll get about a minute in the microwave and while that is going, I my microwave is not very strong, so I mean, it is fine for me. Um, here is some dark chocolate ganache. It's for kids, so I've cut it. Um, 225 grams of milk chocolate, 225 grams of dark chocolate, and 200 ml of, oh, actually 225 ml of just normal whipping cream poured straight on top. Um, I've mixed it up in the microwave. I've uh, done the same thing, just put the um, two different kinds of chocolate buttons together with the cream on top and then I've microwaved it for three lots of 30 seconds. Now, because it's such a small amount, it only takes 30 seconds each time and you just mix it really well in between. And I've let this set up in the fridge for a few, uh, about maybe 10 minutes or so. Normally you wouldn't put your ganache in a deep bowl like this because you're more likely to have it split. So I'll show with the white chocolate that I usually spread it out, but with this one, I've got it in a bowl because it's going to be whipped up, so it doesn't matter. Now, what I will do with that is pop that in the fridge for a little bit longer. It probably needed to set up a little bit more, but I'll pop that in the fridge for a little bit longer and then I'll give it another whip and that'll come nice and aerated. Um, usually for dark chocolate ganache for a, a medium kind of set, you'd go 50-50 uh, ratio. So whatever weight of chocolate by half the weight of the chocolate in cream. So you just divide your chocolate weight by two. I've made a mess here, so I'm going to clean that up. And that'll keep setting. Ow. <laughs> splatter. Absolute splatter. All good. Now, the nice thing about having cream in here is that it helps with the setting. So, uh, it helps with the melting. It makes the microwave a little bit less fierce. So, because I know my microwave, I know how far I can push this. Um, I might only need the one time through. This was a minute and a half with a really weak microwave. And you just mix it around until it all comes together. Now, normally you would do this in 30 second bursts and probably pushed it a bit far, but it's fine. 
and it's because I've got the four blocks that I've been able to go further with the dark chocolate. I wouldn't have been as lucky. And you just mix that around. Keep mixing. And you let the heat of the bowl and the heat from the cream um, melt the chocolate instead of forcing it to melt faster in the microwave. If you overheat it in the microwave, you're more prone to having your chocolate split. It's getting there. You can still see there's a couple of larger lumps and we're in front of an air conditioner here so it's actually chilling down faster than it normally would but if I was to put that in the microwave again I'd be likely to split it. So I'm just going to keep mixing that and mixing that and this is the boring bit. You just keep it moving, keep it moving and try and let the the bowl and the mixture itself melt the chocolate. The less heat that you put into this the better and if I wasn't filming this I'd probably just let that go but and just keep mixing it but I'm going to speed this up and risk splitting it. If your ganache does split um, you can save it by adding a little bit of uh, milk and, and whipping it but you're better off not getting to that stage if you can avoid it because you will uh, make it less firm setting. So I'll be back in a sec. That should only take 15 seconds. Because that chocolate is nearly all melted anyway. And where are we? Yeah. Just keep mixing. Keep mixing and make sure that all the big lumps are out and I can still see some streaks but that's from my white powder and yep that's all the big lumps gone and done pretty much now I just want to get my colour right and do a couple of little drops of gel paste colour in that oh, let's see Americolor colour where are you? Here. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. And it's not much colour at all to give that a really light flush. Um, I'll add a bit more. I don't want it to go Barbie pink though, so. Did I? A little bit more. Let's mix that through. Getting there. It's really hard to counteract the, the yellowness of the chocolate though, so keep going a bit more. And then what I'll do is add a tiny bit of blue, so just a tiny little bit of blue. Um, now, blue is a, a little bit notorious for going everywhere, so it's not much blue, it's just enough to help tone it down. Go see if we can get that colour right. Still got dark chocolate ganache on me. Ah, uh, that's looking better. Getting there. So it's surprising how fast ganache will take colour. I've done bright red ganache, I've done black ganache, and it actually colours up really well. Um, black, you'd just start with the dark chocolate. So the ratios for dark and light chocolate are very different. Um, milk chocolate's different again. Um, in about an hour or so, I will update the different ratios for um, different kinds of chocolate used. And just because this is going to be on a unicorn cake, I actually want it a little bit happier looking. That's a little bit too, too flat. Again, I'm really trying hard to skirt the edge of Barbie pink, but we're getting there and mix it and you can see it's quite thick like this isn't very hot at all but there we go getting there it's a nicer pink and I'll use this to mask the outside of the cake I might film that later I'll see how I go for time I've got my cakes chilling in the fridge at the moment and this is just being made up quickly uh, this will be the outside that whipped ganache will be the filling 
I usually like a firmer ganache as a filling, but sometimes it can make the cakes feel like they're dry. Now, this is the best way I found to stop your ganache from splitting, and that is to pour the ganache into a tray and set it in a tray. This way you don't end up with everything on the outside of the ganache set really firm and then a liquid center and then you keep checking it to see if it's set and what will happen is the fat and the chocolate will split. And it doesn't seem to happen as much with this chocolate but maybe that's just because I'm used to working with it and I've covered myself in chocolate already. Didn't take long. Now I'm going to just put that straight into the fridge and that will set up pretty quickly but it'll set up a lot faster because it's in a tray that's already nearly set and done done sorted now put a little bit of cling film on that put that in the fridge leave it there for half an hour and then it sort of tempers it. I know that it's not a temper because it's a ganache, but what will happen is the chocolate will set up and actually get some structure. I'll just use a like pastry scraper to lift the chocolate out of the tray when it's done. And I can then put it back into a jug, mix it around and get the exact texture that I want. So it should be like a peanut paste, peanut butter kind of texture to mask around the outside of the cake. And then that will be it. So that's going to be the outside of my cake and that's not far off being set. And that, uh, let's see how my other one's going. So, we'll just give this another whiz. And... So for a whipped ganache, you generally want it to be a little bit softer than you normally would have. And let's just see. So um, it just means that you can whip it a little bit easier. Now I still will put that in the fridge for another 15 minutes and whip it again, but that is quite nice and fairly moussey in texture. But just having it that little bit um, softer means that it'll be nicer eating as a filling in the cake itself and still got a little bit of chocolate on the outside there that's not mixed through as well as it maybe could be but that was a bit of a wash so it won't be long another blast <laughs> Again, it's still quite warm, all things considered. I mean, it's not warm to the touch, but it's in terms of ganache, it's still quite warm. Um, that'll be a really nice soft filling on the inside of the cake, so when they slice through, it'll be a nice, soft, delicious cake, instead of having kind of a hard, um, firm ganache. So again, this was made softer by the addition of milk chocolate and dark chocolate. And uh, those will go on and in my cake in the next couple of hours. So that's it. Thank you.